Welcome everyone to the Cosmos SDK Community Call. We hope we have a lot to chat about. Um, so Robert, uh, to answer your question, the, the roadmap doc is in the repo. Um, it's meant to be like a living doc. Q1 is there. Um, I try and update it as often as possible when we complete work scopes um, and when work scopes bleed into the next quarter. Um, and there, and hopefully we're going to be adding more information about where you can follow certain work scopes um, and also of the many teams who are assisting us in um, building out the Cosmos SDK. We're going to add their um, work scope or their kind of roadmap OKRs to the re to that file as well. So there's a more holistic view on everything going on Cosmos SDK related. Um, I'd say there's a lot of like small things that like we do um, that aren't there. And so we get a lot of questions. But if you have any questions, concerns, or think that we're missing out on something, um, just uh, come over, yell at us. We're always happy to listen. Um, and then we can work together on it. Awesome. So to start, um, we so I, I wanted to talk about like the Twilight, give everyone an update there, um, the Twilight release. Also wanted to give a short update on all the working groups. Um, there's been quite a few updates there. Um, and I'm off at the beginning. And video 54. So I think, and time about textual. Those are all the working groups, right? And then we have a new one starting. Um, we're getting in the groove, guys. We're getting in the groove. Um, yeah, just like going through it. Probably it might be better to, instead of like going through Q1, Q2, like to break it down into the release, right? Yeah, because so, yeah, so this for is most the, of the, for most of us, it's like more important. Okay, like what will go in the next release? <laughs> yeah. So this is. Um, this is something that I was actually talking to Julian about today. Um, so him and I are going to like sit down and do that uh, next week. Um, and then we will be able to give a, an updated um, updated doc on that. We may add it as a secondary section. So these are just work scopes that we're like starting, but they may not be included in the next release as you as you touched on, uh, Robert. So we'll be adding a document um, for like major releases coming in the, in the next release. Um, so. Awesome. so a quick update on Twilight. Twilight is 047. Um, we, uh, we spun up a testnet with IBC and Cosmosm. Cosmosm did some testing on testnet. Um, and I, uh, I've been meaning to set up a faucet so anyone can come and play around on the testnet. Um, anyone can connect, send some tokens to Osmosis, put it on, create a pool with it, have some fun. Um, this is not financial advice. Um, but uh, yeah, just kind of like have some fun on the testnet. And so I'll, I can share links if you want to like test it. Um, and uh, so recently, we were all aware that uh, Tendermint did a re the, the Tendermint maintenance, the Tendermint core team did a rebrand of the product to Comet. And so um, we uh, made a group decision to pause Twilight to be able to integrate Comet. Um, and so we want to, um, so right now we're working with the Comet team. Um, they're doing their QA process. Um, and after the QA process, they will be able to. Um, then we'll be able to move forward with the releases. We'll be upgrading the testnet as well to Comet as soon as IBC and uh, Cosmosm upgrade. Um, the Cosmosm um, will begin the upgrade to Comet and any other changes in Node 47 March 1st. I already synced with them on that. So um, thank you, thank you to Confio, thank you to Ethan and Alex on that. Um, and yeah, and so that's currently where we stand on Twilight. Um, Giancarlo, you raised your hand. I, by accident, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Um, does anyone have any questions on Twilight itself? So what's the ETL? It's like ETA? Uh, it's like um, 
one more month, um, two more months? The, um, the update that we got from Comet and Adi is here on the call, so um, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the team's working as, as hard as possible to uh, aim for a uh, release next week. Um, and then we would be either, depending on when that is during the week and how much we can, um, uh, how fast we can get the testnet upgraded and run the same tests with Cosmosm and other things, then we will um, maybe at tail end of next week or the following week is the goal. Um, so that is the new timeline. Yeah, that sounds I mean, in, about right. We're, we're talking about 037, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that sounds about right. Thank you. Um, it's it's not a Cosmos release if you're not hearing every two weeks. Uh, if you're not hearing in, in two weeks, every two weeks. Um, it's how the hub started, and we're we're trying to keep that tradition alive. Um, hopefully, hopefully it dies pretty soon. Um, so I apologize. Um, any other questions on Twilight? Awesome. Um, uh, another quick feature update on Twilight that uh, I actually just remembered. So there's been a lot of commotion on Twitter about a minimum proposal deposit. Um, this feature was actually added to 047, but the, the piece that was missing was the proposal deposit actually being burned potentially if it does not enter or if it does not enter the voting period. Um, this would help prevent spam proposals as we're seeing on the, on the hub. There's been about 100 proposals in spam over the past week. And so um, we're going to be working on adding that burn, uh, burning of the deposit, of the min deposit required by the proposer um, to help prevent spamming. Robert, do you have a question? I see you unmuted yourself. Oh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> I was thinking about the question because we have a minimum deposit, but this is for like creating the proposal. Right, because yes. now you can create a proposal with zero deposit and then like ask people to make deposit. Yes. And this is when you create a proposal to that you automatically have to put something. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And nice. then it's like, this will it's like um this will be a governance prem. So um actually all the mechanisms, um there's a PR open previously that all the mechanisms within um governance uh, that that could allow for uh, the to the deposit being burned, so not reaching quorum, not reaching voting period, um, and other things could be switched on and off by governance. So the chain themselves will be able to decide if they want to burn in this scenario or if they don't want to burn in that scenario. Um, so this would be a PR that should be landing um, this week or early next week. Yeah, I was just um, also thinking about, you know, but I guess it's out of scope still. Um, like that feature about um, like canceling a proposal. If you remember it, it was just merged in the main, but I don't think it was like heavily tested um, on the testnet. Yeah, yeah. Um, we haven't done QA on that, and the feature for burning is like it's a new parameter, and then like a get of that parameter in a different place. So um, it's a bit safer of a change than an overhaul. Yeah, sounds mu much easier. Mm -hmm. But 048 is um, so the next release of SDK. Um, we're going to be working on like scoping what's going to be included in that release. The one guarantee that will be included is uh, sign mode textual handlers. So sign mode textual with the new Ledger app um, will be released, and uh, ABCI 2.0, so vote extensions and finalized block will be part of that release. Um, and that is uh, that those two those two items are guaranteed, and the rest uh, we will. Um, we will fine tune and get a document out. Awesome. So now I want to start on the working groups. So we have a couple working groups ongoing. Um, if at any point you want to join the working group, then just uh, give us a shot and we'll add you to the call. Um, so right now, first, we have a storage working group. Um, the storage working group is being, by, being led by uh, Bez. Um, the previous, there was a previous storage working group, if you remember. Um, so Ian and Roy from that storage working group have been attending. I believe, Robert, you were on the invite or, or Bez asked in the Cosmos Tech, um, but may, may have not heard from back from you. But uh, a lot of that work from ADR40 um, is being adopted. There are some minor changes. Um, oh, Robert, we can add you if you'd like to attend. 
Um, I believe uh, Bez asked in Cosmos Tech. Um, perfect. And so there's a new ADR being written, ADR 65. It takes a lot of the design principles of ADR 40, so the separation of state storage and state commitment. Um, it does a few things differently, namely um, it's using a version timestamps feature from RocksDB instead of DB snapshots. And uh, we're not changing the under tree right away. We're gonna be sticking with IVL this, um, this, this round. And then part of Q3, if you look at our roadmap, we actually have as a research topic, um, Merkleization and commitment research um, for various other tree designs or commitment structures. Any questions on that? Yeah, maybe like if you guys like had a better look or a call with, um, what was his name? Not Ryan. Roy, Roy and Ian, they've been, they've, been, uh, they've been also attending the calls as well. They're on the call. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, so they've been attending, they've been giving feedback um, on their implementation and giving us the like um, what they learned from their implementation. Um, and so, um, yeah, keep up with ADR65. Bez is writing it. Um, so Bez is yeah, by the way, I think they are using in, in this, what's the name of it, Laconic? Um, they actually said they, they gave up on using it because it diverged so much from the SDK that maintaining it would be too much of a burden. Uh, mm. Um, perfect. So the next part is testing. So we have a testing working group um, focused on integration testing. So inside the SDK, um, there isn't a clean canonical way to do testing on the various way on the various topics. And so we really focused on unit. Um, and so we mocked uh, a lot. We rewrote a lot of the unit test use mocks. Now we're working on an integration testing framework um that is uh if we if we look at today's integration and end-to-end -end testing framework it's a mishmash of integration and end-to-end -end, and we want to create a focused um we want to create a focused um integration testing framework so uh, and and document it so teams know that like if they want to write the integration test this is how this is the recommended way to do it um, next we're going to be working on the end-to-end end -to -end testing framework and lastly, we'll be diving into the simulator. Um, Mark from StrangeUp will also be um, leading um, some of those. And so we're going to be working um, on getting a better canonical way of testing the SDK. Any questions there? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I moved forward with the idea. I was like bringing up uh, a year ago or more about like this, in my opinion, yeah, but Keeper design that Keeper serves both the like control part and the data access part right which makes it harder to test so in the last few weeks i was like uh pushing it forward that concept at umi and um uh yes have some good result and um if you guys want i can do some um i don't know a, a walk through that or like present that concept yeah um would you want to do it today on or, or on a different community call? Um, I would need to prepare for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, awesome. Then yeah, let's let's definitely organize um, of that. Um, I love to. We love to be able to showcase um, like what people are working on in the ecosystem on these calls as well. And I think this is uh, uh, perfect. Cool. So maybe like, what is that like? Okay, I can chat you with you. But in two weeks should yeah. be fine. Or in a way, no, in two weeks. Okay, I'll tell you what you like that I can. Cool. Some uh, Ferdy is leading the um, working group. So he's uh, been, he made a proposal, Aaron made a proposal. We discussed it previously on the call. Um, he's starting a storage working group. There, uh, we haven't had our first meeting, or um, maybe we have Ferdy. Are you here? No, we didn't yet. I will send the invites for next week. Awesome. So yeah, so that's going to kick off next week, and there's going to be a lot of discussions about how authentication um, works in the SDK. 
um, ADR54. Um, so if you've been following our PR tab in SDK, ADR54 is the oldest open um, PR, um, and it has um, probably one of the, some of the highest uh, involvement and some of the highest conversation. It's a very hard problem to solve. Um, we've actually talked about it on a few community calls over the past year, and it's been very hard to come to consensus on a path forward. Um, but basically, it's um, with the adoption of internal message routing um, and like how would proto versioning between modules work. And so this is what um, ADR54 is aiming to address. We've already had two um, working group calls. We've made good progress and had really fruitful discussions um, that will also feed into kind of like where the SDK is going long term. Um, and so um, we're working towards that. If anyone wants to join, it's very like very involved and uh, potentially requires like a higher degree of knowledge of um, protobuf. So if you've live through the pain of working with protobuf um, then we welcome you come um, we can be kind of like our, a group therapy of protobuf on the adr 54 working group call let's uh, uh marco do you mind adding more to that the the group therapy part or the the <laughs> adr 54 thing yeah so um well, I, I don't think I'm going to do it the best, the most justice. Um, Aaron, if you're present, do you want to give a short synopsis? Sure, you try. Um, so we're trying to figure out um, basically how do we deal with, uh, like when we split up, okay, we've started splitting up the modules in the SDK into separate Go modules. And in order to kind of make this dependency graph work, um, we need to think about, okay, you know, if module A is depending on the proto the protobuf types for module B, um, does it depend directly on B or does it depend on the protobuf types separately? Um, and if we do it separately, are there different versioning kind of issues that come up? Um, or even if we do it directly, there could be versioning issues that come up. There are issues with semantic versioning that that come up. Um, so there's there's just a number of it's kind of hard to explain it succinctly, but basically there's a bunch of different kind of like um, weird things that can happen between the interaction of protobuf versioning, um, adding new fields to protobuf um, messages, and Go semantic versioning. And we're trying to figure out a solution that is. Um, you know, enables us to have kind of independently versioned modules and is relatively elegant and it's kind of a hard problem. Yeah, it's it's very, very hard. Um, really, yeah, it's really hard to like really articulate like in the ADR, there's even like, I think six proposals on ways to approach it that we've been like discussing and going back and forth on and basically, um, Aaron, I think, proposed a majority of them, and then we've all taken like multiple weeks to like uh, the team has taken multiple weeks to digest them and really think through like how would this look in the long run and stuff like that. Um, so it's it's it is hard to explain as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I get the issue. Um, anyway, Mark might be able to help here. I'll, I'll chat with him about it and um, forward him some content. Awesome. Um, then key management. So just before this call, in our working group call, um, in our in our team call, um, we discussed about reviving this project that was called Keystone. Um, don't don't quote me. I'm calling it Keystone. We're going to work on a new name. Um, but essentially, um, the idea here is we want to potentially refactor or rewrite the keyring in the SDK. Um, as we know, it was kind of like written to a certain point, and then the author. Um, left the project and it was never fully completed and had some bugs. Um, and so the idea here is we want to rewrite the keyring, but we also want to make external, um, we don't, we don't want to limit the way that you do signing to only what's in the binary. We want to allow other ways external to the binary to also handle signing. So you could, um, Aaron best described it as a like semi-custodial authentication system where you could have cloud signers, you could have HSMs, that are external to SDK and that are not integrated directly in the SDK that could sign um, and set and communicate directly with a binary 
um, that is running Osmosis, Gaia, or, or whatever. So the idea here would really just be to create a better key management story. And that is poised to start next week if anyone would like to join. Do you mind adding Justin from the Strange Love team to that call? Uh, this has a lot of relayer implications. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like with with the relayer, it's like if you could host the the key in like AWS Vault or something like that, um, then like it would probably alleviate some pressure. Um, like if validators could host their operator key in volts as well, instead of only like ledger um, being ledger or local being the two options, that would be a good alternative. Um, another another product for strength, for uh, Horcrux, I'd say. Robert, I see you unmuted yourself. Oh no, my mistake. <laughs> yeah, we've we've done um, some of this on Horcrux too integrating cloud signers um so yeah anyway. yeah exactly um so like i think you guys do it mainly for consensus keys um and then this would just be for the operator key um and for signing in general um like a step forward um those are the items that like i had i wanted to like give you guys updates on um now want to open the floor to anyone who has questions about the sdk um about the potential items on the roadmap um or just general ideas or things you would like to talk about or present your own product. Um, does anyone want to go? Usually it's a bit of silence and then someone unmutes. Awesome. If there's if no one has anything they'd like to discuss, at least this um, Oh, someone added. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Um, so there's actually an issue. Uh, events and logs. And so let me actually share the issue with you guys. Um, there is an issue that we need feedback, that we'd like feedback from you guys on. Basically, right now, how the event system works is um, that uh, the events are emitted in the event place of. Um, I don't know, is that directed at me or? Yeah, there, sorry. There is a, there is an account refactor working group. Um, where Jack, would you like me to add uh, request you to be added or someone from your team? Um. I can go. I can go to one or two, and then I'll drag in people from my team. I just love to kind of see what's in the works there. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so yeah. So basically, when we emit events from the SDK, we emit it in the events field of the ABCI of the ABC uh, messages. Um, we also emit it in the field of um, the logs. And what's included in the logs has a index. And that index is associated to which message in the block. And so but this is actually a duplicate of data. So we're actually storing events twice in the, um, in uh, passing events twice to Tendermint, uh, to Comet. And so there's an issue actually to remove the, uh, remove events, uh, remove events from the logs. The, alter the only thing here is like we would need to add an index. And so we just wanted to get feedback if anyone's using events from the logs directly or if they're using the events from like the events field from comment. Um, I guess, um, Jack, from, from your side on the relayer, um, are you guys, do you know if you're using the events or the logs? Um, I believe that we're using the logs because we query the block results API and then we pull all the mm -hmm. events out of there. OK. Um, this is both events and log. So um, yes, so the, the I believe the, I'll double check with the Hermes team, but it could be, um, it could be because of that index field in the logs that is not present in the events. Um, and 
yeah, but I think it's basically that index field buzz. And if we added that to the events in to the events events, then it would like solve um, solve most things. Um, but okay, so Bez, I'm just going to read the chat because there's a conversation going on there, and I don't know why people are not unmuting. Um, or do you guys want to unmute and like have this conversation out loud? Well, I don't know what the answer is because I would need to look into code. I forgot. But the question was why why would anyone use the log? And I'm pretty sure we use it. But it would be nice if we don't, but I think the Hermes really uses it. Okay. Um uh, so yeah, double checking with the relayer team um on the logs and that will kind of get, get us a better answer. Um and if we can merge those into one, um have it only be events, then that is the goal. We have talked in the past about um, reducing the reliance on Tendermint events, and actually, with the uh, streaming functionality um, that has been that is uh, has been merged, and that's also getting a minor refactor right now with ADR thirty eight. Um, we have actually talked about the SDK handling its own events, um, and so there's still going to be events sent to Tendermint, uh, sent to Comet, but the events that, like if you want more fruitful and more information from the events then you'd have to consume it from the SDK. And how you would consume it from the SDK is either via like um, file system or um, file system or um, through GRP through Go plugins, um, with, through HashiCorp core plugins. Aaron, you were gonna Aaron, you were gonna say something. Yeah, it's probably worth mentioning that we did merge an API for bringing events into consensus and for listening to events. Um, within the state machine. We haven't implemented the API yet, but we have specified how that would work. And so, um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a question there. Do Are we are we actually storing the events in app state um, once we move to having the events on the, on the um, chain side? And then there could be, in addition to kind of this, those event listeners that you were describing, Marco, you could just simply query app state for event history, but that that remains to be kind of designed. Yeah, so this is uh, mainly like preliminary thoughts. Um, awesome. If there's uh, nothing else anyone would like to discuss, um, then we can end the call also 30 minutes early. Last call. Mark, do you think um, do you think we should chat through just a little bit some of like the ADR54 um, VM stuff that we were talking, or is it like premature to kind of bring that up here? Um, I'd say potentially it's a uh, it's a bit premature. I don't want to get people too excited um, okay. about it right now, um, okay. just because we're still um, yeah. working on it. Um, so, but yeah, there's like a, a lot of things coming, um, and potentially on the next working group, but uh, on the next community call, we'll be able to give an update on um, where we kind of see a proposal on like where we kind of see the SDK as a product and as a repository. Headed. Awesome, guys. And then have a good weekend. Enjoy the sun if you have it. Um, and talk to you in two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks Marco. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks.